dog, Blue, unexpectedly passed away last week. If you've ever loved and lost someone, be it a parent, friend, or pet, you know how deep this pain goes. There's suddenly this hole in your heart and you truly aren't sure how to move forward anymore. It's the most visceral pain I've felt so far in my life. I know there will be a lot more pain and loss in my life, but for now, this is the hardest. It's kind of like heartbreak, but with no hope of ever getting back together with that person. You feel empty, agony, and it seems like they should be right around the corner at any moment, but they're not. Loss makes you question your reality, your purpose, and everything in between. If you've ever lost someone suddenly out of the blue, it's also a very unique situation. I'm not gonna go into all the details, but my dog Blue was very healthy. She was 10, about to be 11, showed absolutely no signs or symptoms of deteriorating health. We went on long walks regularly. She ate her food. We gave her super healthy homemade food all the time. We were cocky, you know? We really thought she was going to live to be like 20. I heard this quote recently that really resonated. I believe he's a poet slash writer. I'll put his name on the screen. He says, I think grief treats me best when I'm channeling the people I've lost through my current living. The best example I can give of this also goes back to music. There are a couple songs that I love that I'm really drawn to. They're songs I'm loving because I know Tyler would love them. And so I am loving them through him. There are things I know how to make, cook, or bake because I watched my mother do it. I think grief treats us well when these parts of people that we've gotten to enjoy greet us warmly. That's the real gift, to say, I'm not just one person. I am multiple versions of a person, and some of those versions of myself have been loved immensely by people who were so incredible. Through their loving of me, I have a richer texture, and that texture allows me to navigate the world in ways that I am not equipped to do so on my own. And that means that on my best days, I get through the world through the challenges of living, navigated by a whole host of people who have created a generous blueprint through which I have learned to maneuver this life well. Man, what a beautiful sentiment that we are our loved ones. We're just a host. <laughs> we're like a host for all these, I was gonna say parasites, that sounds a little <laughs> bad, but like we're a host for all these people in our life that stay with us and we're only who we are because of them. So they don't leave us and we do things through them. When my dog died, you know, I was used to going on one to two hour walks every day with her and I stopped for like a week and then I picked it back up and I said, you know what, Blue would want me to do this, to be out in nature and to take her on walks too. Like I'm physically like taking her with me on the walk. And again, a lot of this is like woo-woo and I'm not a woo-woo person at all, but this loss actually has made me a little bit more spiritual maybe, I don't know. But I like the idea of that we are because of others and when they loved something we can participate in those things and it makes us feel closer to them okay but to stay on topic with the title of this video i want to talk about you know coping with loss or grief through expression and through painting specifically it doesn't have to be painting that's just my form of expression and that's what i kind of know best but of course this could really apply to anything that helps you heal writing cooking dancing drawing, sculpting, scrapbooking, puzzling. You know, there are so many forms of expression out there. Photography, I've been really into film photography recently, and it's been very soothing. I also wanted to talk about this because my normal productivity has absolutely gone out the window over this past week and a half, but I have been able to create in small ways that honor my grief and help me navigate my feelings. I don't think that we need to be productive when we're going through loss. So that's really important is that this isn't about like being productive. This is about truly healing through art therapy. There are a lot of art therapy techniques out there, different line and dot techniques that you can try that are really great for bringing out different emotions and thoughts. For me, I simply wanted to paint my dog and turn some of her favorite photographs of her into art. 
Some of you may not be able to or want to do anything during your time of grief. We all deal with devastation so, so differently, and anything you choose to do during this time is valid. For the first week after Blue died, I wasn't even able to look at my paintbrushes or even think about doing anything but crying or reminiscing. I closed my art studio door. I didn't even want to look. It just productivity and painting like reminded me of being happy and seeing my dog at my side and I didn't even want to think about that for a while. Now that it's been over a week, I can finally sit down and paint a little bit. You know, it's I'm not back to normal at all, but I'm slowly but surely trying to bring some of that into my life just because I know it makes me happy and it's like what else am I going to do you know (laughs) like sit around and cry all day but for some people especially if you're losing like a best friend or a partner or a parent like you may not want to do anything for months years you know and that's absolutely valid so I just want to make that very clear that like there's no timeline on grief I'm introducing painting back into my routine because it makes me feel good and I'm able to honor blue through that but you know for some people it may take longer or you may not be able to go back to your normal routines you may want to start a new hobby that's something that I've kind of realized during this time too is that I've been doing things that are very different from my normal routine because my normal routine reminded me so much of blue and every time I would do something it would sort of trigger sadness so I started doing things outside of the ordinary like I wore different clothes like clothes in the back of my closet I normally didn't wear I started walking streets I didn't normally walk I started even eating foods like from the back of the pantry that I normally didn't eat because a lot of foods would remind me of her because I would give her little snacks and things so that may be helpful as well if you're feeling like I want to be creative but like my normal outlet just brings back painful memories you might want to try a new medium like maybe you just want to draw and sketch in a beautiful sketchbook Maybe you want to go out and take photos. Maybe you want to scrapbook. That's been really helpful for me. I've been scrapbooking and creating a beautiful book about my dog. Maybe you want to cook. You've never been a cook and you want to try that. And when you decide what you want to do, your medium, whether it's painting, drawing, photography, anything, when you decide that you're ready to express yourself and to use this new medium for grief, I want you to really think about your loved one. Think about their personality, their unique quirks, and the times that they made you feel the most loved. And I want you to channel all of these ideas when you're creating. When I was painting blue here, I started to paint realistically at first and that just didn't feel fun or healing. So I just grabbed random fun colors and I just kind of went crazy on this because to me, blue had such a quirky, eccentric, you know, sassy personality. Think about the emotions that you're experiencing while you're painting or creating. It could be sadness, loneliness, anger, sorrow, guilt. Sometimes you may even feel relief. Feeling these emotions super deeply allows you to then be able to release them when you're ready. I want you to think about the first day that you met your pet or your friend. Think about a time you laughed the hardest with them. Or if it's a pet, you know, what's the funniest thing they did? When is the time you felt closest to them? While you're creating, make sure you're not looking for perfection or, you know, thinking about how you may sell this or post it. I really just want you to think about the process, you know, not the product. Even during my painting process here, I kept thinking, oh, this is so ugly. It doesn't look very good. And I really had to stop myself and say, this feels good just to paint. Just let it be that, you know, just let let blue guide you and just let it flow. This is not about what it looks like. It's about what it feels like, although that can be hard to do sometimes. Our loved ones are always with us. Keep their memory alive and cherish what you have gained from knowing them. Grief is really rough and it takes a long time. So please be gentle with yourself. Allow painting or creating in any form to be your comfort if you find it helpful. Try new ways of creating that have nothing to do with what you've done in the past. These are ways to connect with your loved one and to feel their presence and for you to try things that they may have loved as well. I know this painting was super healing for me and I feel like it gave me a little bit of closure as well. And I hope you feel the same and I'm wishing that for you. A tribute to my favorite dog, Blue, my best friend who I miss dearly. I will never forget you or stop loving you. Please subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video. I would love to have you in my community.
And I'm wishing you peace and closure if you're going through loss right now. I send my deepest sympathies to you and I just want you to know that it's really, really hard and time does heal all, but it's okay if you're not okay. Keep painting or creating from your heart and make sure to love yourself and love Let's others around you. All your bones and mine. Be